Hi, everyone, and welcome to It's Kind of a Big Meal, Plant-Based African Dishes. So today we have a special guest, Meryl Fury, um, and she has done a couple of programs with us before, all about plant-based nutrition. So we thought this would be a perfect way to bring her back and try out some different plant-based African dishes. Um, so I'll be off to the side a little bit. So without further ado, you want to take it away? All right. Well, thank you for having me. This is so exciting. <laughs> we started planning this a couple few months ago mm -hmm. and uh, made it through Christmas successfully. <laughs> and now here we are to talk about um, African dishes, plant-based African dishes, um, and a little bit in honor of um, Black History Month. And we're going to reach back past slavery and go all the way back to um, what people cook in Africa, which is primarily plant-based um, they do eat small amounts of meat, and I'm going to make a broad generalization when I'm talking, um, small amounts of meat, but partly because of the economy and partly because of tradition, they don't eat large amounts of meat at any given sitting like we do in America. It's very typical for us to have a steak, and it's going to cover more than half your plate, right? That's not how the dishes are there. So we've got three dishes to work on tonight. One is called, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right, uh, domada which is from Gambia. It's a peanut stew. We also have matoke, which is from Kenya. It's a stewed plantain in tomato, tomato gravy. And then we have something called sukuma wiki, which is greens and tomatoes. So with that, we can get cooking. Let's get started. All right. Amy is my trusty <laughs> assistant tonight. I'm so grateful to have her here with me. All right. We are going to start with the soup, like we said. So... Mm -hmm. We'll turn that on and we'll put it on simmer. We are also not going to be using um, any oil in the cooking tonight, which will help because we want to keep it healthy. We want to keep the calories low. Yes. Um, we want to, you know, this is also heart health month. So we want to support heart health. I'm a registered nurse. And so that type of thing is super important to me. All right. So here we go. We are heating up our pot. We're gonna start with one large onion. The recipe mm -hmm. calls for a oops, yellow onion. We're going to go with a white onion just because there's really not that big of a difference between yellow and white in the realm of making soup. You know, Maybe in some other areas, it is a big deal, but not for soup. It's all gonna taste good. Yeah. So tell me, what is the magic of this? It just says hi, is that okay, our so right here, I wanna put it on Gonna do a brown. Okay. So we want it to brown. I think it might have just turned off. Okay. So we're just gonna wait for the pan to get hot. And these do heat up very quickly. They do. So we're gonna start with onion, brown mm -hmm. onion. Let me get the recipe here. We're just so gonna onion and salt to start. Yeah, we're just gonna cook the onion just until it starts to brown. Do you have a spoon I can use to Yes, I do have saute. this one that I did not use, but there's also like the wooden spoon. Wood. Yeah, this wooden would be good. They look good here. Perfect. Keep Thank one you. On, on leeway. Okay. And actually, you know what I am going to do? It's going to get mad at me for doing this. I'm going to pour out. We have some water in here, but I don't really need water to simmer the saute like that. Okay, I'm back. So a lot of times um, I get asked about, you know, differences between African cooking and African-American cooking. And there are some pretty marked differences. Uh, whereas we do have a lot of the same styles, you know, like a soup is a soup. I don't care what country you're in. <laughs> you, know, you, <laughs> you put everything in a pot and you, um, you know, do what you have to do with it to make it a soup. So that, that sort of thing is similar. Um, seasonings can be very different. Tonight, we're going to be working a lot with some things that are more common in Mexican and Indian cooking, like ginger is more Indian. Garlic is pretty universal, but we're also using cumin and coriander mm -hmm. and clove, which is very common in Indian cooking. Um, there's a strong 
Indian influence in Africa actually somewhat related to the British occupation of certain parts of Africa. Since the British were occupying India at about the same time, right. <laughs> there's um, some sort of uh, transmigrations going on there. So there's a strong Indian influence in a lot of the African cooking and vice versa. So this um, recipe is actually from a website called Rainbow Plant Life, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I believe the lady who posted it is maybe originally from India or her family is. Very flav flavorful and fragrant dish. So we're sauteing the onions now. We have a little bit of water in the pot and we're just gonna let the onions brown. I'm gonna mm -hmm. try not to bang around too much so you don't have to listen to that. You can see the, the steam coming out. Yeah. It smells good already. Maybe I can, a little you bit, can move I'll it tip a it. little bit, yeah. um, but it will yell at you. It does, We're yes. using an induction cooktop on our Charlie cart today. Yeah, it's so fun, so, so fun. Okay, next it says- have a little bit of, um, we're gonna do the garlic, ginger, and jalapeno. Okay. So we have garlic, ginger, and jalapeno. Perfect. And jalapeno. And this recipe I've made before with, you can use jalapeno. I've made it before with a scotch bonnet pepper, which is a little spicier mm -hmm. than jalapeno. But you can also use habanero if you really like spicy, Heat. spicy. <laughs> um, and then you said you you like making yeah. it with red pepper. So I don't know. I don't know how native jalapenos are in yeah. African cooking, right? Um, actually, when I, I went to Kenya a couple of years ago, there was not a lot of really hot, spicy food. Mm -hmm. There were there some dishes, and you could certainly request um, more peppers in your food, but it's not really typical. So I would usually go with a crushed red pepper or a cayenne maybe, or um, one of my favorite is Aleppo pepper. That's Very nice, mm -hmm. beautiful, smoky pepper. And all of these things, can I say, you can get them at Penzi's. Yeah. Lovely spice store. It, it really Lovely. is. I will say Penzi's is great. I, uh, all of my spices, most of them, except for the cumin are from Penzi's because I ran out. <laughs> yeah. Um, they do a very good job. They really do. But you can use whatever, whatever spice level you're, you're comfortable with. You can adjust it as you need to. Um, if you're not comfortable with, with too spicy, make sure that you take the seeds out of your peppers. Right. And the membranes, because that's yeah. going to take the spice away. That's where the spice usually is sitting. Where the heat is, yes. All right, so we're getting to we're starting to brown a little bit. We figure we start with the soup and we're because gonna, it's yeah. going to take the longest, and <laughs> then we'll do cook. the other two dishes. The other two dishes go very quickly. Right, I'm going to add the garlic now. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, we don't want the garlic to burn, so you have to move that around a bit. Mm -hmm. And next it's ginger, you ginger. said, right? Yep. And then the, the okay, pepper. how much ginger do we have here? That was about two tablespoons. Okay. I just used like a pretty solid knob of ginger. Now, one of the ways that I like to balance out seasonings actually is like by trying to get some of every taste in the pot. When I say that, I mean some umami, some sweet, some hot, some salty, some bitter. Uh, I think that's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. I was checking them off. But yeah. It seems right. That makes, uh, that's sort of more of a Buddhist method of cooking, right? Get some of it all in there. And I'm going to put in the jalapeno. Yes. Uh, right now we've got garlic, ginger, and jalapeno are all pretty hot. It's smelling pretty good. Yeah. So we're going to have to balance this out. Cook that for a little bit mm -hmm. just to let them all melt. Let me have a little bit of broth, please. So like I said, we are not cooking with oil tonight. We're just going to use a little bit of broth to make sure we keep our, 
can deglaze. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, smells delicious. Yes, yes. There's um, something to be said for ginger and garlic. Mm -hmm. That's that is, my favorite. Yeah, that is a very common combination for um, both these African dishes and like curries and things like that. Okay. And then our next addition is going to be the tomato paste. Okay. We I'm have two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Tomato paste. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'm just going to scoop that right in there. And then we're going to add all of the spices and just a pinch of salt. Okay. And black pepper to taste. I'm not a huge black pepper person, so usually I go pretty light on that. Pretty light on the black pepper. Well, we've got a it's lot of heat very, in here. Yeah, <laughs> I think black pepper is very overpowering. It can be. Um, yeah, and it doesn't have that much flavor to me. But that's just a personal personal preference. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, we're gonna throw the spices in. We have the it's coriander, coriander and then cumin, and cumin, and I mixed the cinnamon and the clove together. Let's see that. Yum. Now, another one of my favorite saute smells is onion, ginger, and clove mm -hmm. and cinnamon together. Beautiful. Really good. Smells really good here. So maybe we can give you a view of what this looks like. I hope you can see it and I'll do it quickly so that. <laughs> it's looking good. Yeah, excellent. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yell next, you until you put right? it next, what do we have? So, and then we're gonna put a little bit of salt, little salt. and a little pepper. Okay. Now really, not much salt at all. Um, I would much prefer people salt on their plate mm -hmm. than put a much in the pot. And I know that could be backwards, but I have a husband who insists on salting everything. Doesn't matter, it could be pickles, olives. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it personally, but. <laughs> Um, so I don't usually put a lot of salt in the pot because I know he will salt it on his plate. Oh, I know. I my grandma growing up used to make the saltiest food, so I'm a very light salt. Yeah, when right. Because you can always add it later. That's right. You always can. Okay. What's up next? And then once that's all nice and incorporated, mm -hmm. we're gonna do a couple splashes of water. Just to make sure nothing is sticking. Okay. Okay, it should be good. Thank you. And then we're going to incorporate, once that gets all nice and scraped up, we're going to do the rest of the broth. This okay. This is about four cups of broth. So one quart of broth. Mm -mm. Just use one whole container. Yeah. Now, there are certain kinds of broth I would recommend. I am a whole food plant based cook. So I mm -hmm. like to um, get ingredients that don't have chemicals in them as far as possible. So if you're looking for a broth, read the labels. That would be a great thing to have a conversation about, reading labels. Yes, um, I would like to do yes, a class on that. Yes, that would be great because a lot of us believe we're supposed to be reading the label and we're looking at the nutrition information, which will tell you interesting things like vitamin A and salt or sodium and sugars and things like that, but it doesn't tell you anything about how many chemicals are actually in whatever it is you're purchasing or you're using. That is only on the ingredients label. Mm -hmm. So I fully recommend that you read the ingredients label. And if there's anything on there that you can't pronounce, you probably shouldn't be eating it. Yep. And um, also another way you can look at it too, is if the milligrams of salt are more than the calories per serving, you probably shouldn't be eating that either. These are all very hard on the body when it comes to digestion and monitoring and maintaining your health. I you know some of the, the amount of sodium in some things is just crazy. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Okay, what's up next? So we have our sweet potatoes. This is about Nicely a pound. Nicely diced sweet potatoes. I got Try and let you see that as I pour it in. Each one of these sweet potatoes was about a pound. Now for a dish like this, where you're making um, a soup, right? 
you could probably just get average everyday sweet potatoes. If you like organics, you could certainly get organic sweet potatoes. Um, no need to go for an exotic variety if you're, you know, going to be cooking it down in all these spices and everything like that. One of my favorite varieties, that being said, is the red garnet sweet potatoes. They are beautifully velvety, rich, orange, very flavorful sweet potato. Look out for that next yeah, time. Yeah, they're great, wonderful. But for a soup, you know, yeah. every sweet potatoes is sweet potatoes. Okay, these are cannellini beans. We have one can? Mm -hmm. One can. So about 15 ounce can of cannellini, rinsed and drained. And I, I looked at the label to try to get as least, clean as you uh, can. Least amount of ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have some pressed tomatoes. Okay. So you could use fresh in this recipe, but winter tomatoes to me are just, it's not the same yeah. as a good summer tomato. So if you can't get fresh, you can use canned. Like Meryl said, just try to read your ingredients. That's important. Yes, yes, yes. And then we're going to add the thyme and our peanut butter. Okay. So thyme, we are literally just going to take this, these branches and drop them in there. Calls for a small handful of thyme. So we're going to do that. And then our peanut butter. And then peanut butter, we have a half cup peanut butter. Now at this point, I really don't think I can pick up this pot and show it to you what's inside. I think we'd have a grand mess and the <laughs> library would look at me like I had lost my mind. So we're not gonna do that. I wish I could, I wish I could show you what it looks like. I can see it and it looks beautiful. Yeah. And for the peanut butter, of course, we're gonna go for an unsweetened peanut butter. Mm -hmm. um, the recipe does call for creamy. I have made it with crunchy. I was going to ask, have you ever made it with crunchy? I have. I've only done It's done great. Creamy. It's just, yeah. it's great. I think like, that would be good. Yeah, it's very good. And then if anyone has a nut allergy, mm. you can also sub out the peanut butter for like a sunflower seed mm -hmm. butter. And that'll have like the same sweet sweetness to it, same consistency. Yeah. Because that's really what we're, we're looking for. It's looking good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to let that sit for a while. Yeah, that needs about, to cook. We'll probably change it to simmer. Okay. For about 20 to 25 minutes. And then right before it's done, we're going to add our kale. Okay. Round one. Next. <laughs> Started. <laughs> All right. Next, we're going to go yeah. for the Sukuma Wiki or? Yes. Okay. I think that is a. Good idea. And that one was hmm. so this one, our first ingredient is gonna be onions again. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, you're gonna have to show me how to turn this on. Okay. So this one, it should be on. Try um, pushing these out. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. And she figures it out. I'm going to turn this down because we just want to. I'm going to do like. 160. Okay. I think that's as long as we can do it. I'm going to do a half hour just. Yeah, that doesn't take more than enough. Sure. So the library got us another hot plate just for this occasion. <laughs> and we're having a learning curve. Yes. <laughs> so. so I believe it is just heating up right now. Maybe. Yeah. Just let me do something on this. Mm -hmm. Mm 
still not getting hotter. Go down to like 200, or, or yeah, yeah, good. Okay, that's getting warm now. There we go. Okay. We'll just leave it. <laughs> Don't touch Thank it. Thank you for being patient with, <laughs> with our new toy. That's right. That's right. That's great. So, okay. same thing, we're going to use water instead of oil. Yep. Okay. So, again, sauteing without oil. And we're doing the sukuma, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do okay. onion first. So we put actually, you know what? I'm gonna let that just heat up. heat up a bit. And that's this one, right? Yep, that's gonna be the the sliced onion. All right, I'm just gonna see how good. All right, so the onion. And we're gonna do the this one. This tomato. Okay. Back here. All right. And you told me a good way to test a pan when you're using water. Yeah. You just did that. Yes, I should have should so have can, said. So do that next, at the next yeah, one. we'll show that in the next one. Um to make sure the pan is the right temperature, and that helps keep your food from sticking on the surface of the pan. But we'll show you how to do that next. This, but this is when you're not using oil. Actually, I don't want to put that in yet. The onions will actually release their own essential oils. And a lot of times you don't even need oil or water um, to saute them. So we have red onion here. And this dish is called Sukuma Wiki. Um, I have a friend in Kenya. I, I was kind of WhatsApping with her to find out why do they call it Sukuma Wiki? What is that, right? So it means push a week. And she said that it had to do with when the laborers in Kenya were getting paid very, very little. They would get halfway through the week, the family would, you know, and they would run out of food because they couldn't, they weren't making enough to supply enough food for the family and their, all their other expenses. So um, the laborer, father, husband would say, okay, go out and get some cheap greens so you can push the week until I get paid again. So Sukuma Wiki means push a week and it has to do with that. Just keeping the family fed till payday. So it's onion, which we are sauteing, mm -hmm. and they are doing well. This is a perfect dish. I feel like it really encompasses that because it's something like if you had a lot of greens or, or something, they'll cook down mm -hmm. a lot, but this still makes it, there's a very few amount of ingredients in this, but it's so delicious. Yeah, very, very flavorful again. And not in the typical way that we're used to. You know, there's, right. it's not, it's not sweetie, sweet or salty. Right, I feel like oily. a lot of, a lot of American dishes we're used to it being very sweet. Yes, and we have a very sweet flavor profile in American cooking. Mm -hmm. Now that's a whole nother story. There's actually a very interesting book since we're here in the library. There's a book called Salt, Sugar, Fat by Michael Moss. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting. Another one he also wrote called Hooked. Um, it talks all about how American, the American flavor palette became what it is. Um, it has a lot to do with trying to sell the foods that big companies want people to eat. So they add more sugar, they add more salt, they add more fat. Right. And that is how we start eating the way we eat and continue to eat the way we eat because it's what's provided and it's what we're used to. Salt is um, 
I don't want to say addictive, but it, it's alluring. You know, it calls I, you. I do think that there is a mild addictive quality mm. to salt. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of water now. I think and, that's it's so important to incorporate more, more plants and, and fruits and vegetables. What do they say? Eat the rainbow. Yes, eat the rainbow. Eat the rainbow. You want to try to eat as many whole foods as you can. Yes, yes. Yeah, plants and, um, you know, the vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, whole grains, um, legumes, and mushrooms <laughs> are what keep us healthy, really, you know. They have lots of phytonutrients and all the vitamins and the minerals and the fiber, my goodness, that um, meat does not have and animal products does not, do not have. And what they do have of it, it's because the animal was eating plants. Mm -hmm. So you could just go straight to eating plants and you'll be fine for the most part. There's only one vitamin that you can't get from eating plants and that is called B12. Mm -hmm. So, you, I mean, mostly if you're just gonna eat plants, it would be recommended that you take a B12 supplement. Other than that, you should be pretty good. Some people do take iodine supplements because they, the major source for iodine in plant material is seaweed. And most people in America don't really eat that much seaweed. It's not a thing for Americans, but you could take an iodine supplement or just use iodized salt and that will take care of it too. All right, we have the onions ready. What's up next? Then we'll just do the tomatoes. 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 So this again, this recipe, instead of using a ripe, two ripe tomatoes, we're just using some canned tomatoes. That is looking beautiful. Looks gorgeous. And then we have garlic optional. All right, we're gonna put a little bit of garlic because I think what happened was we might wind up putting a little more garlic in that one. I am okay with that. I'm definitely a garlic person. Okay. We do, we can put a little bit of garlic. Yeah, that's perfect. It's gonna work out perfectly. Yep. So you all know recipes are guides. Yes. <laughs> They're not gospels. Yes, the guide way. <laughs> so you kind of make the recipe your own as you yes. are making it. I always add more garlic. Yeah. I mean, any recipe would ask I for a garlic I person. Do too. <laughs> I do too. All right. So then once that is all cooked, um, we're just going to add just the greens. So it's just okay. a little bit longer on that. And then we're going to use a Swiss chard. But you can use other greens. Uh, you can use like a collard green. You can use a kale. kale. And there is a special type of green that they, they yeah, use in Africa that they to use, make this. Uh, yeah, in Kenya. I want, you know, they, I can't remember the name of the green. But for, um, it doesn't exist here in the United States mm -hmm. anyway. So we you just said, go with these. Isn't it like a little bit like crunchier? Yes. Yeah. They, a different it's, texture it's, than it's crunchy. What we so have here. What we're going to do with this is cook it till just bright green, right? We're not going to cook it to death. So one of the things in, um, I remember in my mom's kitchen anyway, she would kick, cook kale and collards and mustards and turnip greens. That was an all day process. She would cook those greens till they were so soft and so tender, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, we don't, we don't need to do that. <laughs> That's like cooking them to death. <laughs> so I'll try to come this way so you can see what it looks like. Oops. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. All now traditionally, yeah. Actually, you could stir that if you like. A little stir. Traditionally, the um, greens in the Sukuma Wiki are um, sliced very, very thin, like they were almost like they're shredded. Today, we just tore them up, which is fine. I'm sure they will taste the same. <laughs> and we're gonna have to let this cook down just a little bit. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water just while the 
kale is cooking. I don't want anything to stick on the bottom. Okay. And you were able to stir this. Looks yes. great. Yes. Yeah, it smells amazing. Heavenly. The main thing we're waiting for in here is for the sweet potatoes to just get to be fork tender. And a great way to do that is just cut them up real, real small. Yeah, just small. do a real small dice. Let's see. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, our timing is going well. We're at yeah. six thirty, and we have one dish left to get on. So the main thing here, um, can I increase that a little bit? Yes. We do have a little space. So can people ask questions during this? Does anybody have any questions? Please send them in. We'd mm -hmm. love to answer whatever questions you have. Or if there's anything you need us to go over again, yeah, please. please feel free to, to put anything in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Yes, there is a trash can right there. So, you know, back to, I was saying before about the differences between African and African-American cooking. So, you know, for African-Americans, a lot of people came through the South, um, through the slave trade. We've all heard those stories. No need to repeat them. <laughs> but it changed the cooking. It changed the way that um, people who came here from Africa, people who were brought here from Africa, the, the way that they were used to cooking changed. A, because the ingredients were different. Mm -hmm. B, because of the conditions they lived under. Um, and C, because they were only allowed certain types of ingredients, right? So um, a lot of what happened to food that the slaves ate was that it was very poor quality. Um, seriously, not not worth giving a dog. It was food for vultures. And um, the slaves were very strong and determined people. <laughs> and um, they did their best to survive with what food they had. So they wound up using, you know, sauces like barbecue sauce and um, salt and lard and things like that to flavor the food. Um, and sadly, it was not, it just wasn't good, healthy food. It actually has led people to, you know, for those of us who continue to eat that way with lots of sugar and lard and animal products and heavy ingredients like that, um, that's one thing that leads people to have heart disease and high blood pressure and diabetes and cancers and things like that. And as a nurse, it just, oh my gosh, it's just heartbreaking. I, I can't, awful. This is actually, for me, this is medicine. Food is medicine. This is how I work with people. This is how I would prefer to heal people. It's by teaching them how to, how to eat healthy food because so many of those illnesses that are the biggest killers in the United States, heart disease in particular, has been the, the biggest killer for the last 100 years. <laughs> um, and it is, for the most part, we could resolve it. That could be a, no, a non-issue if people just learned how to eat healthy food because a lot of heart disease is not really genetically determined. It's determined by lifestyle. Right. Lifestyle being what we eat, whether we smoke, um, how much exercise we get. But food is it all day long because we eat all day long. And what we choose to eat um, frequently is bad for our hearts. Okay, I don't want to cook this anymore. The, green, the greens are bright and very pretty. So we can take this off and we can go on with the next one. Okay, I have a plate here. Okay, let's scoop it off. You know what, I'm afraid I'm gonna burn you. <laughs> so rather than risk that, there. let's do this over here yeah. and I'll let you manage that. Here, I'll go ahead and oh, plate it. this real quick. And our element is screaming at us. 
finish it off. As, <laughs> yeah, as soon as Amy comes back with that pan, we'll do the last dish. And I'll stir the peanuts too. Oh, it's boiling a lot. Beautiful. I'm just going now we did it. make some of this earlier, so we can show you what it looks like, even if it's not oh completely cooked before our Thank session. You. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. We have success. Okay. Next we are making. So now matoke. we are going to do my with, favorite, I think, yes. of the three. This is such a yummy dish. Okay. This is called matoke which is stewed plantain in a tomato gravy. We've already um, steamed what we're, we're using like green bananas because in my opinion, this is only my opinion, we don't get real good plantain in Wisconsin. <laughs> um, plantain is a mystery in Wisconsin. So we're gonna use green bananas and we've already steamed them. Uh, Okay, so we're heating the pan and I can show you this time now about yes. the, the proper so you know the temperature. Water under that. Yep. Okay, now, I don't know if I can actually show you because of the angle of things. It might yell at you. It might. Let <laughs> okay. me have- I don't know if you can like lift it up a little bit. Yeah, can I have another spoon? Of course. A rather large one, like a tablespoon size. Perfect, there you go. All right, we're gonna try to show you. Mm -mm. Not yet, but that's good. So you see how the, the um, water is just, it doesn't beat up. It's just, you know, lazily rolling or, or spreading in the pan. The what? Oh, it probably, you might not be able to see it then, huh? All right, well, I'll describe it to you. So there's a thing called mercury ball temperature. And you can actually Google it, mm -hmm. and you'll see a little little videos of um, how you find mercury ball temperature. But you allow your pan to heat up to the point where, when you drop, you know, it could be just a teaspoon of water or less in the pan, the water beads up and rolls on the Here surface of the pan. It's doing a little bit now. It's like it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. So there is a question for you. Yes. So can you tell us a bit more about your connection to food? What influence do you think gels and do you help in nutrition? Oh my goodness. Now, <laughs> how many hours do you have? <laughs> <laughs> um, so my connection to food is, um, yeah, very deep. I started up my plant-based getting, stopping eating meat when I was 15 years old and it has continued pretty steadily since then. Um, in that span of time, I became a nurse. I studied a lot of nutrition and physiology and anatomy and pathophysiology and comparative anatomy and just all kinds of stuff. Um, partly because I was interested and partly because they were prerequisites to become a nurse. And in the course of studying nursing, Let's go with the, hold on one second. What's the first ingredient? For the onion, onion yeah. first. Okay. Perfect. So we're going to put the onion in. The pan's hot enough now. Um, in the course of studying nursing, um, this is a little known secret. Neither nurses nor doctors get taught about nutrition. Okay. No matter what you think, it's not true. <laughs> I don't care uh, what school you're at. It doesn't matter. It's not a part of the standard curriculum for medical professionals to learn about nutrition. That is something that's um, handed off to dietitians, and even they get only a certain type of nutrition education, right? It's um, focused on illness as opposed to wellness. So as a nurse, um, I guess before, well, before I went into nursing, I'd already been interested in herbology and natural health. And I had a massage practice for a while, body work, and I did a lot of therapeutic massage and things like that. And always it comes back to food. You know, people will not heal if they're eating poorly. It just doesn't happen. So I did a lot of work in um, public health. I worked with people who had very, very minimal resources. Um, a lot of times they 
or homeless or, you know, single moms with um, no support systems, or they were recent immigrants from other countries and, um, you know, they, they, they suffered from lack of adequate food or um, adequate nutrition. And then I got to a point where I just got kind of fed up with the medical philosophy in this country, which is more about treating illness than it is about maintaining health. And I had the good fortune to be able to retire. And um, I just started working more with food and studying and teaching. And um, so now I actually you know, do a lot of coaching with people, help them transition. I do a lot of programs actually, um, educational programs like this. I lead a nonprofit, which is all about whole food, plant-based nutrition. And in the nonprofit, which is called the Plant-Based Nutrition Movement, you can look that up, pbnm.org. Uh, we focus on teaching people how to transition to a healthy diet that's full of plants, regardless of where they are or how they can do it, we help them. And we work primarily with populations of people, groups of people who have been hardest hit by poor eating habits. And a lot of it has to do with our society and what our society teaches us is good food. So here's a fun fact. <clears throat> Something like 80% of the people in the United States are actually unable to digest meat, uh, dairy products, mm -hmm. completely unable. And among African-Americans, it's something, I don't know, 85 or 90%, something like that, it's in that range. But our food pyramid is what it used to be. Now it's my plate, always has dairy products on it. Yeah, always, which is fascinating, right? There is um, lots of research that shows <clears throat> dairy products are associated with breast cancer. So, I'm all about trying to get people to know that dairy products are not your friend. They're designed to grow baby cows. Mm -hmm. You're not a baby cow <laughs> and you don't want to be a cow. <laughs> and you also don't want the illnesses that come along with drinking milk that was not designed for you and, you know, definitely detrimental. There's just so many studies on that, that, that prove that. So, you know, you got me up on my soapbox, right? <laughs> my other favorite little known fact, I feel like I need to say it every chance I get, because I just don't, I, I, it floors me that people don't hear these facts, right? These are well, well documented facts that nobody hears. So in 2015, seven years ago, the World Health Organization declared all processed meats as carcinogens. So that's bacon, sausage, jerky, deli meats, ham, turkey, beef. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter. All those processed meats are carcinogenic. I don't care how good they taste. They lead to colon cancer and other kinds of issues. But we don't hear that, right? Nope. What we hear is we should go out and get a bacon double cheeseburger. Right. I feel like, yeah, if more people had that information, I think a lot more people would eat plant-based. Yeah. Yeah. Or if it, if it was promoted, if we've got nearly even half the number right. of commercials saying what I just said, right. compared to the number of commercials we get for that bacon double cheese cheeseburger, right. it would be a different place. I agree. We're gonna add the garlic next. And okay. Then a little bit of the, the tomato broth. Good. So we're just gonna put in the garlic. Just cook it just a little bit. Yeah. Most recipes I feel like call for garlic too early. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the garlic didn't burn. <clears throat> and then tomatoes. And then, yeah, just like a little bit of the tomato juice, or just put all the tomatoes in. I'll just put it all in. And then I don't have to worry about that anymore. So these are fire roasted tomatoes I just put in. This is one of my favorite dishes, really. This honestly blew my mind when we tried it. <laughs> I love it. You have a commercial? 
question to you. Is that also true of nit nitrate? Nitrate free meats and antibiotic free meats for being carcinogenic. Yes, I am sad to say it doesn't matter if it's grass fed, it doesn't matter if it's free range, it doesn't matter um, if it lived its happy life out in the pasture in the sun. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a processed meat, it is a class one carcinogen. If it is red meat, it's considered a class two carcinogen. Class one means it is absolutely linked to cancer, just like tobacco smoke is linked to, to uh, lung cancer. That would be a class one carcinogen. And class two means it is pretty highly likely, yep, 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 connected. <laughs> yes. That's just crazy. Mind blowing. Mind blowing. Why don't more people know that? Well, I'll even take it one further, okay? Because my current passion, I love kids, I love them. Um, and I feel they need to be protected and taken care of all the time because that's just the nature of kids, right? They don't know enough to take care of themselves. Um, Sandra. But in schools, what do kids get mostly in the school lunch programs? Now, truly it's great. There's a lot of kids who don't have access to food on a regular basis, right? So school lunch is a great thing. We feed a lot of hungry children that way. Somebody told me today, I think, and I, on a daily basis, it's something like 70, I don't know, some crazy number in the billions of meals that we provide in school lunch programs. Um, but when we're feeding our kids stuff like um, hot dogs and corn dogs and things like that, you have to question, you know, what's going on there? What exactly is going on there? You heard this past week, just this week, New York um, has now plant-based Fridays or vegan Fridays, so they're not serving any meat products. That's amazing. Yeah, in New York City on um, Fridays now. And that is directly related to- And water. Thank you. Bananas. Bananas. That's directly related to their new mayor, Eric Adams. That's amazing. Who reversed his diabetes using wow. food alone, plant-based diet alone, no medications. So I love what you said. Food is medicine. It it's, is. It's it a is. way to get our nutrition, but it's also a way to heal ourselves. Yep. I definitely agree with that. And we're going to throw in just the, our greens into our soup okay. at the very end because it's just... How are we? Just that? about done, I think. Oh, look at the potatoes that. potatoes seem pretty soft. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, we do want to wilt our greens, so we'll toss that in. Yeah. Be careful, it's very hot, so it is going to steam. So I'm just checking the sweet potato. It's fork tender. That's great. You can pull these what we fork. want. Mm -hmm. Oh, that super is good. so beautiful. So like Amy said, we are eating the rainbow. We've got our oranges and our reds <laughs> and our greens. We've got purples and yeah, what else are we missing? I don't know. Not much. <laughs> guess we don't have a blue, but. <laughs> yeah, I guess we don't have a Purple blue. Purple is good. Blue food is hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like blueberries. Okay. So first one is, is there no processed peanuts? That's the question. Say, it, say it again, I'm sorry. So are there no any pro are there any processed peanuts? No. I'm sorry, no. Uh, well, yeah, there's a whole room full of them. There's you know a whole freezer case full of them. They're just not healthy. <laughs> so yes, they're available, but no, you shouldn't eat them. So we've got some time. Yes. I'm saying there could be plantains in some Asian stores and Mexican stores here, but they're also sold at Woodlands, but doesn't know tell if they're right. Do you know, can you tell us how to tell that plantains are right? Well, I'll tell you. I have hunted far and wide for decent plantain, and my family is from the Virgin Islands. At least half of it is. So um, you can get 
plant and, and you can let them ripen. Like you buy, they're usually green, very often anyway. And you let them ripen like you would let um, bananas ripen. So they, you know, the skin turns yellow eventually and it starts to darken eventually. I still don't like that flavor myself. There are people who do, but I don't. That's, that's really, maybe it's a personal preference for me, maybe because I was maybe a little bit spoiled because I spent too much time in the Caribbean <laughs> eating plantain that were grown right there. That might be it. Yeah, I've never had, I've never had a good plantain mm. up here. Mm -mm. Not tasty. Stir sure you had a little more water. Maybe. Or the broth. Oh, we already broth put all the broth in. Yeah. <laughs> we already threw all the broth. Never mind that idea. Just adding a little bit more water to make sure that nothing sticks and doesn't get too thick. Oops. I'm glad you guys are asking about the processed meat. Ask me another one. <laughs> I'd be happy to have that conversation. Now there are some, um, you know, um, like the meat analogs, they call them, or the faux meats. You know, there's like the beyond meats and the impossible meats and the incognitos and the, there's so many other, so many different ones now. Um, those do not have, as far as we know, the carcinogenic quality. You can use, there are, um, like you can make something similar to bacon out of eggplant or out of mushrooms, like the portobello mushroom caps. I've done the mushroom before, that's yes. really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are options that are healthier. But bacon's not your friend, yes. So was that kale that you added to the soup or a mix of different things? It was just kale for that one. But you could use different greens yeah. if you wanted to. Sure could. I love any any like dark leafy green would work. Okay. So we already made some soup before. So it'll look like this. It'll come around when you want to serve it. I don't know if you can see it. You don't want to spill it. And then when you oh, serve it, good. you're gonna do just like a little spritz of lemon. And then you can serve it over a grain too, mm -hmm. if yes. you prefer that. Yeah, um, I had it, it over rice. I've done it over rice. Yeah, you know what else works really well on that one is like um, chopped see. peanuts. Not gonna That's the sukima wiki. And I just put some cilantro on top of it. And this one is ready to. Then we'll plate this one and bring it around. Should I just hit the power button? Yeah, I'll just turn it off. And I'll go ahead and plate this and bring it out. Mm -hmm. Well, that went pretty fast, didn't it? It did, and we made what, three? Three dishes. Three different dishes yeah. in under an hour. Yes, yeah. And even this one, the soup is done. Beautiful. Any other questions? Go ahead and toss this. So, you have a favorite place to shop in Connecticut Central area with a high quality food. Yes, I nearly always go to Woodman's, to be honest. They have terrific selections, their produce is usually pretty good. Um, in fact, it's, I, I it's rare that I have a problem with produce coming from Woodman's. Um, they have a decent, like their healthy food aisle is good. They have probably three aisles of, um, you know, your gluten-free and your soy-free and your sugar-free and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so I choose Woodman's and their, their prices are good. You can also go to I mean, you can find some great produce from time. I don't go there super often, but Aldi is not bad. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, remember to bring your own bags. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's where I that's where I shop. 
really. The other stores um, also do great, do well. They're just more expensive. Right. Yeah. I feel like Woodman's has the cheapest produce, but mm -hmm. it's the best quality. It is very good. Mm -hmm. we have our and then we said to Kenzie's for spices. Yes. <laughs> great stuff. And this is our motoke. That's the motoke with the plantains and tomatoes. And this was, this is so delicious with the bananas. Mm. It's a great way to get some potassium. Yeah. It's amazing. But yeah, I think, I, well, I think, I think that's all we got. It. I think we did it. If there's not any other questions, yeah. um, feel free if you make any of this at home to send an email. Um, I can send it over to you. You could. If anyone makes, makes any of these at home, let us know how you like it. The email that you would send it to is ask at mykpl.info. I'm gonna ask that you put that in the chat yeah. just to make it easier. Uh, but if there's any questions, and feel actually, free. Um, Xander, if you put my email yeah. in too, just in case just anybody wants to find me, um, it's Meryl Fury at pbnm.org. Yeah, we had a question of will we be doing more wonderful classes like this? We were just um, talking about probably <laughs> partnering again. I was yeah. going to say thank you so much for your time. This was so much fun. Yeah, I yeah. love that you brought these recipes. And yes. I love this one. This honestly changed my view of bananas. <laughs> That's so life thank altering. You. That's it really wonderful. is. Yeah. 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 So, so if we have anything yes. to say about it, yes. Yes. We would partner. Hopefully. Again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks, thanks for spending time with us yeah, tonight. Yeah, everyone have a good night. Yeah, hope you try these and enjoy yes. them. <laughs>